let's have a little chat. The inverted yield curve, the price of gold, and the fake economy. You know the yield curve inverted a little while ago. And historically, that has predicted every recession. And the last time the yield curve inverted was 2006. And you saw what happened in 2007, 2008. Gold has hit an all-time high recently. You've got Trump saying that this is the best economy. You've got people who are talking about, hey, I got a job. There's more jobs than people. But let's dive a little deeper. Most of these jobs, many of these jobs, you need two to three of these jobs just to make it because one job will not do it. We have 7 million people behind on their car payments, 37 million people behind on their credit card payments. Where is the good economy? Just saw a video today talking about how trucking is experiencing a, a recession or a depression, which makes sense. Retail's footprint has been drastically reduced. So there's less shipments and there's less demand and there are laying off dock, hand, dock hands in shipping yards. Any way you look at it, the economy is not as good as some people want you to believe. It's just not. There's just too much churn, there's too much burn, there's too many bad things. Millennials cannot afford to do things that the benchmarks or the milestones that their parents did. They don't have the money. The average income in this country is 28 to 32 K a year. Half the people working make between those numbers. Adjusted for inflation, they've lost buying power. So, you know, I was talking about the recession about 18 months ago. That was to give you guys a heads up so you can get ready. The time to get ready is over because it's here. We're currently in a recession led by retail and this trade war that Donald has going on ain't helping things. It's making things worse. So at any day, you could get called into the, co the conference room. Hey, Bob, let me holler at you for a minute. Do, 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 do. Bob, we're sorry. We're going to have to let you go. This is happening right now. People are losing jobs. Well, because we've got this president who has his own agenda that is deeper than the country, he's gonna keep saying the economy's good. Historically, the stock market doesn't speak well of the whole economy. And I've had many people say like, you know, the stock market predicts the economy. Um, I would say it doesn't. You got Bitcoin going crazy because people are like, where do I put my money? Where do I put my money, man? What's a good place for me to store some cash? Let me try Bitcoin. Let me try gold. And once again, don't go out and buy gold and silver. There are many people telling you to go out and get gold and silver. If you already have an established portfolio, maybe 5 to 10% of your portfolio should be in precious metals to round out your portfolio. But if you're just a regular dude, a regular chick without any portfolio, with a lot of debt, buying gold is not going to help you. Buying silver is not going to help you because you're not playing the game that needs to be played. But this, this, is, this, is, this is where we are, folks. The recession is here. It's, hello, I'm here. And you have people who don't want to acknowledge it I look at Facebook um, postings and I'm totally aware that these people are clueless because the recession hasn't impacted them yet. As long as they can buy and do whatever they want to do, they're good. They don't, they, they don't really care. They'll keep listening to Fox News and certain talking points. 
But the minute, just like these farmers who trusted Trump and he burned them, just like these injured manufacturing industries are like, oh, we're going to keep these jobs here, and the factory still moved. Uh, there's going to be a lot of people with sour taste in their mouth on this Donald thing because no president should get credit for a good economy or a bad economy. Because presidents don't really do things. Well, except Donald, he's doing this trade war thing, which is impacting the economy. But typically, the economy is so large, one man and his policies usually can't impact it, except we got this wrecking ball in the, in the White House. But the recession is here. When I, the last recession, I was still in business, I still had a physical location. I remember my customer base changed. So for those of you who are in business, look for changes in your customer. My customer base used to be mostly white people from Craigslist, eBay, and walking through the door on the upscale garage sale Saturday was Hispanics, black people, deal hunters. I noticed that my base got very white. Because these people, they were coming to the garage sale. Uh, my Craigslist uh, traffic quadrupled because people were looking for deals because they had to have deals because they didn't have a lot of money. So look for that in the economy because right now, you know, everyone's thinking that all this traffic is going to Amazon. It hasn't gone to Amazon. Amazon only has a percentage of all the e all commerce. When you look at it, the footprint of commerce is shrinking, which means there's a pullback. Uh, people are just not shopping the way that they used to shop. They're not spending as much money. So this is what's going on. One of the things that is illuminating, and that's a little scary, about this current recession is when Obama was in office, that administration did a lot of things to fix a lot of bad stuff. We don't have guidance in the administration that's going to focus on the real problems. It is said <clears throat> that Trump doesn't like bad news and anyone that gives him bad news, they get fired. So people are hesitant to give him bad news. That's not a good thing. As a leader, as a manager, the of, of, of owner of a company, you should want someone to come to you and tell you as soon as it happened, we got some bad news here, player. They ain't doing that. Now, with this inverted yield curve, the price of gold at a record in recent uh, years, what is one to do? How does one navigate a recession? You got to skill yourself up. You got to look for skills that are in demand and educate yourself. Buying gold and silver when you don't have in demand skill sets is stupid because you're going to see a recession is a great time for you to expand your customer base if you're in, if you're in business. It's a great time for you to spend more money on advertising because advertising will be cheaper because less people are spending it and it'll be less competitive. So what you need to do is skill yourself up, get in areas that are hot, learn how to do marketing, learn how to run Facebook ads, learn how to run Google ads, learn how to do YouTube ads. That's going to be a demand, an in-demand skill. People will be looking for folks with those skill sets. Uh, people who know how to tell a story, people who know how to do video, uh, People who know how to be salesmen. Good salesmen are going to be in high demand because a recession means that people pull back. It doesn't just completely stop. If it completely stopped, man, I would hate to see what would happen. We're talking like walking dead scenario. But one of the things that you should do to prepare yourself for, well, you know, if you, well, you can't prepare yourself. It's here. Get out of debt. I have too many people coming to me talking about, like, I got X amount of debt. I'm about to invest in some Bitcoin. I'm about to invest. Your dollars are not as strong as they would be if you didn't have debt.
Because you have debt, you're economically weak. And this isn't to be considered good debt. Good debt is business debt. You got a mortgage on your, your building. But petty, ridiculous debt like car payments, that's gonna be a that's gonna kill some people. Car payments, uh too mortgage too big. So you got to get yourself out of debt. You may need to go ahead and start making moves while you can to downsize your lifestyle. Get rid of the cars with the car payments. If you can sell them, because while there's still time, people out there have the ability to finance, get rid of that stuff. Get rid of any foolish debt. Get rid of credit cards. You know, if you're one of those people who've had student loans for 10 years and they still like almost six figures, you live in dangerously. Because as long as you are making money, you can play the game. But if you get that, hey Carl, can we see you in the conference room? You get that, game over. I've been in a situation where things got bad. That's how I ended up homeless. I didn't have any money, I didn't have any savings. I did not plan accordingly. Um, I was reading an article today that it takes 20 years of everything going correctly to escape poverty. What this recession is going to do is expand the poverty class. Because there are some people who are barely holding on with their fingertips. they just barely there. And the first bad thing to happen is going to knock them off the economic ladder. Many of you who have been watching me for four, five, six, seven, ten 10 years, and you still have not started your business, you still have not brought the money management course, you still have not managed your money correctly, uh, shame on you. Because the information has been here for you to utilize. I got a, a wonderful message from someone that said, thank you for posting the How to Get Gold at Garage Sales video. That video is seven years old. He sent it to me. He said we do about 100, 1400 bucks every time we go out. The knowledge does you no good if you don't apply it, if you don't utilize it. There's plenty of knowledge, there's plenty of guideposts, but some of y'all are just lazy. Are you waiting on the mythical fairy godfather to come in and wave their magic wand and bless your life with some money? Because the clock it's ticking. You only got so much time if you're still in a good position to solidify your position. Because once again, get out of debt. Start a side hustle while you can. Because the recession is here. Like I said, I was on this kick last year, 18 months, 24 months out. I was warning you, giving you information on what to do. And if you got caught with your pants down, you have no one to blame but yourself. That may sound harsh, but some people got to fall to understand that concrete is hard. Some people are like, yeah, you can tell them that concrete is hard. Okay, they get it and they take action. Some people, hey, a recession is coming. You need to do this. You need to do that. You need to set yourself up. Blah, 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 Glendon. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. And you are the people who email me these ridiculous things. It's like, hey, Glendon, what do you got that can make three to $5,000? And maybe, you know, the price of the course is $9,900. You folks be emailing me those kind of questions because you don't prepare for the future. And also, you should get a gun. You should get a concealed carry permit and arm yourself. You should have at least three weapons in your house, a shotgun for home defense and carry pistols. You should be about that pew pew life because those people who have been listening to me, who are prepared, who are going to thrive in this recession will become targets for those who didn't. Because the lower the working class is about to, which is already huge, it's about to get bigger. And the other day on my next door, they were 
talking about this. The police actually pulled them over because they were casing houses for packages. That's the crime of opportunity over here. And they get on next door and the ring, the ring, the ring community, they be all over it. So get yourself a gun, start going to the range once or twice a month, familiarize yourself with your gun because it's about to get stupid. It's about to get stupid because people are going to be so pressed. People are going to be so financially stressed out and they're going to do something strange with some change. You may get your $200, $300 car window broken out because you got some change in your ashtray. Don't leave change in your ashtray. Don't leave valuables on your car seats because these crimes of opportunity are going to dramatically increase. iPad, you sell that on credit, so let's take the pawn stop. Don't, don't do that. I see that stuff all the time over here. And these people, they're going to get caught slipping because one of the things that I have noticed is hungry babies can turn anybody into a criminal. You know, I'm not condoning it, but I understand. You got your kid, kid's belly rumbling. You, you haven't skilled yourself up. You walking, you see this MacBook Pro in this car. There ain't nobody else on the street. That brick is right there. Smash and grab and go to the pawn shop so you can feed your baby. And also, I'm about to give y'all some tough love. Stop having these kids you can't support. I firmly believe that children should be a product of marriage. You're like, when I had my situation, I wasn't happy about it because if I ever was going to have any more kids, it was my full attention to be like the first time I had kids to be married. Kids need a father. Kids need a mother. All this baby daddy, mama, mama, baby mama stuff is whack. And it is the quickest path to poverty. Becoming a single mom is a surefire way to hit poverty or to be a permanent member of the working class. Check out the statistics on that. It's a one-way ticket to Povertyville. And who suffers? The child suffers because you in your malfeasance cannot take care of that child and give that child everything they need. And also for the women folk, stop denying your fathers, the, ch the children's father, access to your children because you're mad at him. That's just trash. You're just a trash person because he wants to see the kids, he wants to participate in their life, but you block him. You're messing up everybody's life. You're messing up the kid's life, you're messing up the father's life because you're selfish. And there's a lot of women who are in this situation because you gotta understand, the only power that most women get is the power of being a mother. They don't run any companies, they're not the boss of anything. That's the only thing they can be the boss of, of the family. I'm the mom, listen to me. I'm the queen, let me rule over you. Every aspect, every moment of your life. And that's just whack. But folks, you about to see some strange stuff happen. Uh, the United States is going to start a war. I don't know what it was this thing was trying to start a war with Venezuela, but they're going to start a war to test out all this new uh, air military tech. They're about to start one. Uh, Trump's probably going to stop it to help his re-election efforts. Now, this is the weird thing. I've seen this guy walk on water. If the economy is going to be where I think it will be during re-election, he shouldn't get reelected. But I have seen strange stuff like people donate millions of dollars to a billionaire. I have seen people like, well, you know, he's the best president we ever had. Based on what standard? Telling the truth? Getting certain things done? So I feel that if the economy is bad as I think it's going to be, he won't be reelected. But, put a little asterisk by that, <clears throat> because it's crazy. How people look at this and they make decisions when they get in that voting booth. But, 
one of the things that you should be aware of is every day is an opportunity for you to do the right thing for yourself and your family. And this debt thing and these credit cards, like every day I, I go to the mailbox, I get like several credit card offers. America's drunk on credit. Credit is an extension of income so they can live the life that they can't afford. And that ain't gonna work out forever. Get the money management course. Below this video, I have a pathway for you to set up a firm financial foundation. Below this video, there's a free audio book. Go ahead and get that. Below this video, and listen to it 10 times, there is a, a pathway of courses you should take so you can get your money right. So you can start getting additional money because what's going to get people through this next recession that's here is managing your money correctly and making more money. When you make more money, you can weather life's woes. Like your car breaks down, it's just merely an inconvenience because you got the money in the bank. It's not a life altering crisis where if you're a woman, you got to do some something strange for some change to get the money to fix your car. I got two cars. Uh, recently I had one went to the Audi shop. They kept it three days. I had another car to drive. You want to get more money. You should make it a mandate to get more money in your life. Most of America is working class. They don't have any savings. They don't have any investments. They don't have a business. They don't have a side hustle. Don't let that be you. Don't get caught out here in these cold, mean economic streets with no money. This is the United States of America. You need some money to live in the United States of America. This communal hippie thing, you know, there was a post on Facebook talking about uh, how immigrants live. Native born Americans are not immigrants and they ain't gonna live that way. That's why I'm saying, I'm giving you a pathway. Make more money so you can live how you wanna live. Because most of you ain't gonna live like an immigrant. You're not gonna, unless you're forced to live 10 deep in the two bedroom apartment. You're forced, you'll do it. You have no choice. You don't wanna be caught out here in these mean, cold economic streets with no money. I, I'm here to tell you, and I had a heart attack about 90 days ago. And I had the best doctors, best hospital, world-renowned cardiologists, because I live in the neighborhood because these hospitals are in this neighborhood, so they have the best of the best of the best. And I was in the hospital on my back. I uh, had, a, had a stroke, couldn't had memory problems, all this kind of stuff. Because before, when times were good, I built an economic engine, an asset that churns off cash. When times were good, I didn't lollygag. So I had money and was able to pay all my medical bills and keep living life because I didn't work for a good month, maybe a good month and a half. I didn't do anything. I just laid around here. I was sleeping all day. But because I chose to use my time wisely when times were good to build an economic engine that throws off cash, I was able to weather that health crisis very very well. Uh, there are some people, you have a heart attack, it's game over. You getting evicted, you losing your car, your credit cards are gonna get delinquent, your credit's gonna get jacked up. I'm here to tell you, build when times are good. Don't, you know, it's like, hey, you know, if you go at home right today, you got bills that you can barely pay, and your first thing you wanna do is relax. You hustling backwards. I saw a post and I almost answered all these people who are talking about grind, grind, no vacation. I feel if you are economically disadvantaged or you poor, you don't, you can't afford the vacation. You need to be grinding, grinding. And uh, you know, I, I didn't answer it because it was talking about, you know, how these folks have heart attacks and stuff. Here's the deal. When you're poor and you're trying to climb out of there, there ain't no such thing as work-life balance. You gotta take every opportunity you can to make some money. 
When I was in that boarding house, I ain't taking no vacations. I was poor. I was trying to get some scratch. So one of the things you gotta do is get your mind set that you need to work. And it ain't a punishment. You gotta work hard for three to four or five years. And your life will be so different. So, you know, there's a period where you got to ball out. And that's why I don't think you need to be marrying your first little girlfriend because she gave you a little stank stank. Y'all had a baby. Now, all of a sudden, you got to get a job to feed little JoJo. And your dream of being an architect and your dream of owning an engineering firm is God. Because, you know, your, your dream went to JoJo and her. And I'm here to tell you. After a woman has a baby, she ain't the same woman you knew before she had that baby. She's going to change. It's a biological fact. It's a hormonal fact. She going to change a lot. And some of it may throw you because all her time and attention is going to go toward that baby. And you're going to come second or third. Facts. So be aware of that. And once again, if you have a business that's running itself like the stream this morning, you could take time off to be home to help her with the kid. Do this stuff first. There are too many people emailing me, contacting me, messaging me, messaging me. Hey man, I got kids. What you got for me? Uh, you're gonna have to make some sacrifices, bro. You're gonna have to build a business and sometimes you ain't gonna be, with the, be there for the kids. You're not going to make every soccer game. You're not going to make every little recital. You should have been building before you had kids. This is my message to every single man out there. And we had this conversation on another channel. You should get yourself together. I don't believe in struggle love. I don't believe a woman makes a man. I believe a man makes himself. And if he makes himself in a good image, a woman is a compliment to his life, not a necessary prescription.